Hi guys. Um, so I want to go over the homework with you. So for homework, you guys were asked. Let me get this out of the way. So for homework, you were your goal was to determine. I believe there was an earthquake, right? And the earthquake was um, 81. You can be heard from. Whoops. Let me put this as a pen here. Could be heard from 81 miles away, right? From the epicenter, right? So the epicenter is where the center is, and then it kind of just goes out like a bunch of of uh, concentric circles. So I hope some of us recognize that. It's an 81 mile radius where you could actually feel. So anybody within 81 miles could actually hear the, um, or not actually hear, actually feel the uh, the earthquake. And your goal was to find out, if, for those of you who were, you were told you were 60 miles west, right? So you, we were located 60 miles west and 45 miles south. So to me, I look at it and they told you the epicenter's at the origin. So out 60 miles west and uh, 45 south, you could just easily create a right triangle, right? And then do Pythag squag where this is 60 and this is 45 because you're going out 60 and you're going down 45. And if you do Pythag squag, you should get 75 miles. So you are 75 miles from the epicenter, which tells us that you in fact can feel the um, earthquake because the earthquake is felt 81 miles out. So and I believe they asked you how far from the outer region would you be able to feel it. So um, if this is 75 miles and you can actually feel it out to 81 miles, let's say that the distance from here to here was 81 miles, right, all the way from there to there, then there would be a six-mile lag between the two that would have you do that. So I want to go back for a second, okay? I want to go back and say, is there a way that we can find out the equation of the circle? Um, this circle, and then one that's 81 miles out too. So can we do that? And the answer is yes, we can. We're going to find out. What I typically like to do <coughs> is I like to choose a random point on the circle. I don't know what the ordered pair is on the circle, but I do know that I can write it as x comma y. And I'm coming in from the origin. So if I come from the origin, I can play connect the dots, la, 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 la. And if you recognize this, this is a radius, if you all agree. Now, if I create my right triangle, right, if I create a right triangle, oh, look at my pretty right triangle, I'm coming from the origin, and if I go out this way, how far horizontally have I gone, and how much vertically have I gone? Well, the only thing you could tell me is I don't know how far numerically I have gone, but I can certainly tell you that I go this far out, that's my x-coordinate, that's my horizontal distance, and if I said to you what's my vertical distance, I sincerely hope that you're all saying, oh, it's y. Now, we know that along the circle that we created, that this radius is, you guessed it, it's 75 miles. So if you're looking at this right triangle, right, I see a right triangle. And when you see a right triangle, we should all be screaming Pythag swag. So if I wanted to create an equation using Pythag swag, I would say that x squared plus y squared is equal to 75 squared. Would you agree with that? I hope so, because that's exactly what it is. So now here's the thing. Not only is it the right triangle, if you think about it, this is the right triangle, but this is a hypotenuse of a right triangle, but it's also the radius of the circle. So therefore, this right here represents the equation of the circle. I'm not writing that well, but you can't be great at everything. Okay, so now, that's where we were standing. So if we were standing and then somebody put a string from us, from the um, origin out to us, we would spin around because our radius is 75. But if you think about it, you can feel, like we said, you can feel the um, earthquake out to 81 miles. So we would create a circle going around. Whoops, I don't need to move the paper and make a circle that way. So that all the way across would be 81. So if you think about it, it would be the same idea. I would make that x and make that y respectively, okay? And again, if you create a right triangle, that distance in orange is my horizontal distance, which is x, and my vertical distance is y. So if I did Pythag swag there, I would have x squared plus y squared is equal to 81 squared. So that one there, there goes that crazy light. These lights drive me nuts, you guys, okay? Because they're motion sensors, so when nobody's in here and or I'm not moving, it goes off. So anyway, this represents the equation of the um, 
Yes, the earthquake. I don't know why I can't think about that. I'm like out of my mind. Okay, so that would be the equation of the earthquake. So let's go over the sprinkler problem. So this is the earthquake problem, and now I want to go over the sprinkler problem. So the sprinkler, the sprinkler problem, evidently, um, the sprinkler spins around, right? It's a circular sprinkler, so I'm assuming you guys realize that it's going around and around, so it's going to be a circle, and it covers 1,800 square feet. You were asked to find out what the radius is equal to. So if it covers 1,800 square feet, I hope you guys had the wherewithal to look this up, that this is the area of a circle, okay? And if you're like, I don't know what the area of a circle is, well, you have a computer that can help you find out what the area of a circle is, so I'm calling you out for that, okay? So if you had the wherewithal to look it up, area is equal to pi r squared. So now you're looking for the radius. I told you what the area is, so you're just going to plug that in, equals pi times your radius squared. So if I'm going to do this, I'm going to divide both sides by pi. Don't do anything with your calculators yet, equals r squared. So if I want to do this, I have to take the square root. And by the way, technically it's plus or minus um, 1800 over pi. But I don't want the minus because my radius is never going to be. That's right. It's not going to be negative, not in real number systems. So you're going to go grab your calculators and you're going to hit second square root 1800 divided by pi. We all have pi buttons on our calculators, not 3.14. Go find the pi button. And you should find your radius. It's set to round to three decimal places, which is 23.937. So that's part A. So part B comes along, and I'll change the color. So on the sprinkler problem, part B comes along. And it says, oh gosh, I forgot how much it was. How many square feet was it? Oh, how many or feet was it? I don't remember. 2356. Let's go with it. If I said 20, it doesn't matter. So 320, 2356 square feet. And you want to know how much more radius or how, what, how much longer your radius would have to be or, um, in order for it to cover what it needs to cover. So again, you're going to do area is equal to pi r squared. So you'll do 2356. Again, I know this is the wrong number, but get over yourselves, okay? There go those stupid lights again. So we do 2356 divided by pi is equal to r squared. So if you take the square root of that, and I only care about the positive because technically when you take the square root, it's positive or negative, is equal to r because I don't want a negative radius. So if I do the square root of, and i got to turn the stupid light on again, so I'm going to stand this time. Look, eh, look at how long it takes for it to come on. It's very annoying. 2356 divided by pi, and that's 27.384. So r equals 27.385, excuse me. So it's asking you how much longer would it have to be, so you would simply subtract these two. So 27.3, whoops, 27.385 minus 23.937 would be 3.748. So you would need 3.748 more feet in order to make that happen. Okay, now it's time for you guys to go on to that uh, video investigation one. Good luck.